We're here to talk about something truly terrifying, which is inflation and unemployment. Before we talk about the trade-offs between the two, we're going to define inflation and we're going to define unemployment. So the inflation rate is equal to the percent change in the price levels. And unemployment is caused when wages paid exceed equilibrium. These are some of the main equations I felt important, which is the labor force of employed plus unemployed. We do not include anyone outside of the labor force. People outside the labor force tend to be students, retirees, or homemakers. We look for the unemployment rate based on the labor force, and then we can look at the labor force participation rate of how many people are currently active in our labor force. <laughs> Here we can see where the surplus and unemployment comes from. You can see the wage equilibrium and then the government setting a minimum wage decreases the labor demanded, increases the labor supplied. For trade-offs, we're going to focus on the Phillips curve. This is the negative or inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. When inflation rises, there's lower unemployment and vice versa. There's a natural rate hypothesis where in the short run, in the short term, inflation and unemployment can change, but in the long run, unemployment's gonna stay the same. The natural rate is just, it's gonna return. It's gonna balance out. Focusing on the Phillips curve, we have to look at the aggregate supply, we have to look at the aggregate demand, we have to look at movements or shifts. There's high inflation that equals low unemployment, there's low inflation that equals high unemployment, so this is very opposite. So we're looking here at the inflation rate percent per year versus the unemployment rate. Focusing on the short run Phillips curve versus the long run Phillips curve. Long run is always going to be that natural rate. I believe it's around 4%. And where these lines intersect is their natural or expected unemployment rate. We're going to focus on the short run Phillips curve. And because the x-axis is all unemployment, we can relate that to the real GDP, gross domestic product of an economy. Right now, I believe our economy is real GDP is not meeting its potential, and that's partially causing our high unemployment right now. So this graph shows that when expectations are high which is this black line and expectations are low which is this blue line you can see that in the long term unemployment rate stays the same right but inflation is completely different that blue line is around two percent that black line is around four maybe six and the key thing to take from this is that you can move from the blue line to the black line. So people will do movements on the curve by moving on the blue line, up inflation, back employment, and try to get back to the LRPC line. We were talking about movements, but now let's focus on shifts in the curve. The biggest one is when there's a huge shock to aggregate supply, there's a huge like oil spill or complete cutoff of supply that's causing extreme price increase and extreme things to happen. In the book, they focus on when oil is in very low supply, how prices increase dramatically. So this is the normal supply and demand graph, but 
on the aggregate scale, on the large scale, the macro scale. And when we shift the supply, the aggregate supply to the left, this increases the price level, it decreases the quantity, and we're gonna see that this, it looks like a huge shift, it could be small, it could be huge, but this shift is gonna directly impact inversely on the Phillips curve over there. And this is actually slightly different from the other slides in the fact that when that left graph, graph shifts to the left, right, we have supply shifting to the left, we're going to have the Phillips curve shifting to the right. And this is going to cause both inflation and unemployment to increase together, which is crazy. And the other graphs do not have both increase or decrease together. So we're going to get the federal government involved. <laughs> and they have the power to withhold money and cash flows, and they're going to do some deflation. They're going to use expected inflation and rational expectations. They're going to compute a sacrifice, or I, I think of a scarcity ratio. They're going to compute all of these percent points of output loss when inflation is reduced because that's their job. <laughs> so we're going back to this main, this main graph that we see over and over again of the inflation rate versus unemployment. This is the main graph for this chapter. And so many things can happen to it. There's movements, there's shifts, and it's... You just gotta remember, the long run is inelastic, like an eye. I always think of inelastic with an eye. And we see that there's low expectations, low expected inflation that they have computed and continue to compute. And this blue line, this is where we are. This is when it's high expectations. And the government is trying to get from the blue line back to the black line. The Federal Reserve can move on the blue line the best they can to get back to that black dot. Because that's their goal, to lower inflation. I think I've covered all of the main points of chapter 22. Go back, look at all of the bolded words. Those were the five key terms. Our source is the principles of macroeconomics. And don't forget, supply to the sky, demand to the dirt. That's the phrase I use all the time in my mind. It helps so much.